Geek Tank Radio on 98.1 The Max. Welcome, everyone. We are the patrol, and our microphones don't have a stun setting. This episode of Geek Tank Radio is brought to you by the wearable toilet. You won't have to miss a minute of the big game or even get up from the couch all night when you suit up with the wearable toilet. I mean, what are adult diapers no good for us anymore, Alan? I mean, <laughs> I, I long for the day when I can do a show with adults. I mean, I, I think Futurama had a version of this that I, I, I think probably Dune stole. has an entire movie based, based on suits like this. But no. this one's stylish. You would never believe porcelain could be so comfortable. Oh, but I'm telling right. you, uh, right. it's going to be a hot, a hot item this weekend. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to, <laughs> and, and the look of disgust on Brandon's oh. face is worth the whole price of admission. I, I don't know why I keep coming in here. I don't know. Uh, anyway, welcome to uh, Geek Tank Radio, <laughs> I really don't. everybody. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max over there. Uh, back at the studio, we are live. Uh, you probably hear the ambiance. We are here mm. at the home show. Is that what it's South. called? That's not true. Joe took his shoes off earlier, and nobody will come near our booth. Yeah, yeah the, but um, we're, we're here at the Agri Center. We'd love for you to come by and say hello and, uh, you know, check it out. Stay. Uh, there's some swag. There's a little bit of swag left. Alan Alan's overbought on the swag. Come get things with all of our logos on it yeah and yeah, um they need stuff oh yeah tons of stuff they need to subscribe they need to subscribe they to tankradio.com they can go to youtube and subscribe prove you are a subscriber and we'll give you better stuff okay that's true too yeah like good shows mm. we um, have those we, yeah, prom- we, do. we don't promise that <laughs> hey uh speaking of alan um later in the show in science apparently star trek is is here and it's ready it's fully operational is that right? Uh, we, we're going to say a tractor beam has actually worked. I'll Joe fill just, in the rest. Joe just clickbaited himself this he week. He did. That is awesome. The thing is, uh, I'm sorry, I, miss, I, I I left Star Wars out of this. Tractor beams are not exclusively a, a Trek Well, device. no, but... but uh, it's they just, are a sci-fi they staple. They are a sci-fi staple. And, and, and it's here, so... Um, I want to just quickly mention something. Uh, uh, well, no, I don't want to mention it yet. Brandon, later in the show, also, you want to discuss AMC, AMC Theater's new <laughs> what, uh, pricing What is probably sort of one, of the, one of the uh, more uh, – it's not being talked about enough. AMC has a new pricing policy, and they're basically trying to do to theaters what Ned Candy always tells us the elite try to do with opera. Yeah. Um, exa- so it's we're not going gonna- to work. We're going to weigh in on that, and uh, I just want to quickly give a shout-out. Uh, the Bad Batch, just like I said, whenever I start to question Dave Filoni, he uh, steps up and gives us a, a really good episode. I can't remember if it was episode six or seven, but the most recep- recent episode of uh, The Bad Batch is full of political well, intrigue and a lot of depth and really I- interesting characters, and it's it's well worth watching. It's not just for kids. I mean, you did notice that they dropped two episodes this last week, right? No, I didn't. Yeah. How did I miss that? So, uh, okay. All right. Because you're used to only getting one a week. We'll wrap up the Bad Batch as the se- you know when the season's over. But, Max, before we get to that, you had something you wanted to weigh in on, right? Yes. In the wonderful land of Japan, I bring to you the Dako Sword. Scientists the Dako Sword. The archaeologists in Japan, not to be confused with Taco, recently mm. unearthed a seven-foot sword known as the yes. Dako, which is 1,600 years old in a burial mm-hmm. mound in Japan. and this, Holy smokes. This artifact was not believed to be used to defend yourself in battle, but to protect a person after death. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a Ceremonial minute. Ceremonial so purposes. you were buried with this. Yes. It was like more, the Vikings had them on their chest, right? And then they burn them and throw them over a I think it was more like a ceremonial that. thing. It's like more of a ritual that a high priest might perform, and they use the sword, like how... It, Certain like certain rituals might involve certain gardening equipment or thereabouts, like staffs and stuff like that. Seven foot. That, that's a pretty big casket, right? Yeah, so I mean, where do they seven, st- seven foot sword as being worthy of being wielded by the yeah. demons and gods and you know other other such fantastic folk of Japanese folklore. Interesting. Where did they find this, Max? Was it just laying around somewhere, or it was <laughs> in a burial site? Um, uh, in Japan, there are things called kofun. From ancient times, and these are one of the burial mounds that they found them in. Alan's rolling his eyes at me. Okay, Alan, wh- I, it, it should. It wasn't in the place it was supposed to be. Well, it, I, it was I, an I don't unexpected find, but they okay. were excavating uh, a burial mound, and then somebody went, 
hey, look, you know, anime weapons existed 1,600 years ago. That's the thing. It's yes. what it reminded me. It reminded me of uh, we, we see kids carrying bigger than that around at the uh, anime. And there were, you, you can expect <laughs> to see a Daco sword next year. I absolutely promise and there you. Were, yeah. And there were actually. You won't have to wait till next year. And there were actually <laughs> samurai. It'll be there in July. Mm-hmm. And there were Good, actually Matt. samurai that wielded swords similar to the Dako in terms of length. They were called Odachi, and they were believed to be used as cavalry weapons in order to, like, dismount horses and everything, or maybe dismember mm-hmm. horses. Really? Yes, it was a Japanese version of the European great sword designed to go through the horse and the rider. <laughs> that sounds pretty mean, So, but um, I guess whatever takes care of business, right? So, uh, uh, You had to stop them both. Okay. How, what does this look like, Max? You said it's, I mean, seven feet, but what's the, because they, they, you know, the Japanese make some pretty cool swords. Now, so. what's cool about the word dako is it comes from the um, uh, characters for snake and to go or to meander. So the ter- the literal, um, uh, it's called a dako ken. So it quite literally means a meandering or snaking sword. And it has sort of a snakish quality to it in terms of its shape. Huh. Well, tell it, what do you mean? Well, and it's just getting like, information out of Max is like pulling teeth. Okay. Well, I kind what of already said like it. A snake? Like in terms of like the slithery nature of it, it's like I'm a. It says I'm a like it's an undulated blade that's reminiscent of a snake. Okay, there we go. Don't the Egyptians have a blade like that? What What's the point of Everybody a blade does. like that? Well, that would be a crisp blade where it has the the wavy the wavy blade. Yes. I feel like sharpening that would be a hassle. It is. Yeah. Okay. But a really good sharp one can make some make some really serious. Uh, Short endage of some shrubbery and or practice stuff. All right. Well, Max, I would say it behooves you to get a picture of this thing and send it to us and see if we can post it because um, it sounds interesting, but I'm still having a little trouble visualizing this baby. It's a big O sword, man. It's impressive. Okay. Hey, um, all right. Well, you know, it's interesting to see it. it, it I don't know. It's interesting to see the different customs, the different cultures, mm-hmm. and, and why they do what they do. So, I don't Well, know. this is going to be an almost instant anime influence. I promise you, within a year, you're going to see these, these weapons appear in media. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, so what are we going to get to next, you guys? I suppose we should, uh, we should chime in on the breaking news with the AMC Theater, mm-hmm. stag- the, the, the uh, new pricing structure. I just wonder if this is I, – I, it, it sounds very ill-advised. I don't know one person well, that's excited about it. Uh, the, the marketers at AMC are. Yeah, we'll see about that. They're not that, real bright. So. Okay. All right, you're listening to Geek Tank Radio. We'll be right back. You're listening to Geek Tank Radio on 98.1 The Max. Drop the racing form and step away from the TARDIS. The Geek Patrol is back. I don't understand that reference. No, I think I do. Time travel, <laughs> cheating. Sounds like Back to the Future 2, right? Uh, I'll be honest. These, I liked our re, re, uh, rejoiners when Max was doing them by himself. Anyway, welcome back to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I, I hate to admit, but I had a hand in some of this. So. Mm. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy uh, Max back there at the studio. Uh, uh, you can Well, what am I saying? I was just... Uh, I'm trying to encourage people to come by the booth and say hello, but... Um, well, we're here at the Agri Center, so come on down. Yeah, you we're, That's how you encourage them, Jeff. Well, we're giving away some stuff, yeah. but I guess we can cross-pollinate. I mean, we have a lot of Tool Talk stuff we're giving yeah, away as yeah, well. Yeah, we got but, all kinds uh, of goodies. But we have our Geek Tank radio hats on. We do. Know, that's what we're showcasing today. Well, you do. Yeah. Um, hey, guys, so, uh, Brandon, yes, this sir. is breaking news, and I, I've even heard... I mean, it's two weeks I've old, heard but. people that don't care about... it. This isn't a geek thing. This is a... Universal. This is a universal situation. thing. Uh, one of the things here at Geek Tank Radio we've always talked about is how theaters can't get out of their own way. How they well, the they're the- up against mm. it. They well, have a the- challenge well, no, days. theaters themselves are slowly killing the theater experience. Are you blaming them? I am totally blaming them on a lot of these occasions because as things increase, as things change. Less and less people are wanting to go to the theater, especially since they have amazing home theaters, you know, at this point. And this was happening long before the pandemic made it where we all had to watch TV at home in anyway. Yeah, because I'm blaming COVID. but Right. Okay. I'm not blaming COVID because AMC and Regal Theaters were on their way to bankruptcy before we had a pandemic. Okay. You know, go back, you look at it, their financials are not great. Well, Regal is gone. They have officially folded. You know, but AMC is kind of desperate so they've decided that they're going to do to you what concerts and the uh, you know the the arts have done to you for years they are going to start charging more for better seats 
Okay. They're going to use a line of sight uh, model, which basically means that your centralized seats are going to cost at least $2 more right now. Your stuff down front is going to be $2 less than your average ticket price. And meanwhile, those upper t- seats that we always like yeah. are going to stay the same. Okay, because so you're talking about because the, the real aficionado, they always, uh, you, you know, when, in the days when we would line up and you had to, it was first come, first serve, right. and you get there two hours early, everybody ran for the center of the theater, right? I mean, Right, which is, I think, one of the reasons why I people like, like us, myself, we always go towards yeah. the top. Yeah, I like it just because it's I like to look out over the peasants myself. <laughs> I, I <laughs> don't like just loud people sitting behind me. And I don't, I thing, don't like so. people sitting behind me who might be, you know, smacking their popcorn their or whatever. Yeah. It's just my own, you know, my perf- personal preference. I don't like, I like my back to the wall. But right now they are basically telling you that if you don't make a certain, you know, they're, you know it's going to become it's a very almost elitist thing. And this is, this has angered people over in Hollywood. We've, we've heard from Seth Green. We've heard from Elijah Wood about how this is basically turning the theater going experience into an elitist experience. What do you mean by that? Well, because when it comes down to it, think about it like this. You already can't afford to take your family to a theater unless you want to take out a second mortgage. Well, or in some okay. cases, a third. It's pricier than it used to be, but yeah. I just bought four tickets to a matinee showing and spent almost $70. Yeah, okay. All right. So let's talk about it being pricey. But what, what we're getting here is that you're, you're, the seats that you've always tried to avoid. The front row. Right. They are going to be $2 less. The stuff in the center will be two dollars more than your average price. Yeah. Now we all know what's going to happen as soon as people go, you know, get over the initial shock, and then they're like, "Okay, well, we're going to do this." They're going to raise your ticket price on that lower level up to your the centralized line of sight pricing and move everything else up. And instead of two dollar price points, it'll become a five dollar price point. They already did that with the Batman when AMC was showing the Batman in theaters. They were already charging more to see the Batman than they were to see anything else that was in that theater. See, here's my thing, Brandon. See, right? I don't know if this translates exactly because, okay, if you you know you mentioned a concert. Well, to me, if you're going to a arena that seats fifteen thousand or forty thousand people, right. obviously it makes sense that you're paying more to be closer because right, right. it's noticeably you know, closer. If you, but in a if theater, you're there, we're talking about the if difference you're there of, close enough to throw articles of clothing at your favorite right. rock star or whatnot, <laughs> you expect to pay more than the guy who is so far back that he's behind a speaker. But the difference in a theater is literally 20 or 30 feet. So right. how noticeable is this? I mean, nobody, I don't know. I, who cares enough about it to have that center seat reserved, I guess? I well, I feel like yeah, this they, goes. They are, this this goes to show me how out of touch you are with the theater experience. Ever since they've started doing the reserved seating, no, I I, I because, get that, but because that's no people will in sit price. there. It's they're like sniping for an eBay price. They will sit there, and as soon as prices go on sale for something like Ant Man and the right. Wasp: Quantum Manium, and then all of a sudden, within two seconds, everything that's in the uh, the line of sight, you know, sweet zone, is gone. Yeah, uh, but it's the same price. That's right. what I'm saying. There it is there. But not at AMC. As of this Friday, those prices went into effect. I I don't know, man. This just seems like very tone deaf to me. It is extremely I, they do, tone deaf. they got to do what they can to get people back to the theater. I mean, we've never really recovered. I know there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of factors, but I still believe COVID really – you know, people learned after two years, well, I don't have to go to the movies. Oh. I can still have a life without well, it. Well, that, uh, that and the fact yeah. that, I mean, let's just be honest, that as many, is, we haven't had as many I got to see this movies either. You I know, don't, I don't know. They just, you know, it's like, hey, I can, I can wait my 45 days until it's on Disney Plus or Netflix or Amazon. And in some cases, you're not even waiting that long. Because you know, uh, like, there was know, a day it, you had to wait six months before it yeah, came out. Yeah, it's like right video. now, it's like, as of February first, if I wanted, if I had wanted to, I could have waited and watched Wakanda Forever on Disney Plus. Okay, are you going to boycott AMC? Uh, seeing as how there are no AMC theaters in Memphis, I don't have to worry <laughs> about that really. But if somehow they manage to make this a workable model, and hope, I'm, I'm siding with Alan and hoping that it doesn't work. It's not going to work. Yeah, but Alan it, doesn't even care about the movies. Well, no, so but but Alan also that. Alan Alan's the kind of guy who. Uh, if there's a way to make money, Alan knows what it is. <laughs> and he also knows which of those ventures are going to be bad. Okay. I mean, Alan, you've been very quiet about this. You, you don't, uh, you you know, don't uh, care, really. Six so. months from now, this is quietly going to go away. 
See, I feel like it's, it's just going to disappear. Yeah. There's some things that just don't – they weren't even worth do- – I don't really understand the mentality here well, at all. It's well, the- as soon as this marketing director proves – that their profitability has not changed. They've right. just really angered residents coming, you know, because they want, they, you need people in those seats. And when I say residents, you need repeat people in those seats. Yeah. And now you're not going to have them. I, I, and they're going to let this guy go. I don't know. But okay. with the way that they've raised prices on us before, quietly, 2 or $3 at a time sometimes, mm-hmm. people just, get, they, they are angry for 14 minutes, and then they're like, uh, I'm gonna, I, I want to go see Ant-Man. Okay. We're going to ponder this off the air. You're listening to Geek Tank Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Geek Tank Radio on 98.1 The Max. Their Metachlorian count is off the charts. The Geek Patrol is back. Mine is. Yours is pretty high, Brandon. Well, you know, I just, I'll I, give you that. I, I try to be humble about it. He don't, we don't brag about that. Anyway, welcome back to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max back at the studio. We're live at the Agri Center. Come on out, say hello, check things out, and get some free swag. So, yeah, there you go. Um, hey, uh, guys, if you're just tuning in, we have uh, we've been discussing well a, a few things. Max uh, brought us a story about uh, uh, a really interesting sword that was found. It's seven foot, sixteen hundred years old, found in Japan, and uh, pretty pretty neat. Uh, we're not going to rehash it, but it's uh, you you know it's it's a uh, it's going to show up at a lot of anime conventions that, you know recreations of this. Uh, we've been discussing though the AMC theater um, staggered pricing structure that they're putting together, and we all think the AMC executives are a little tone deaf at the moment. They're supposed to be doing things to make us want to come to the theater. I don't know that this is a big selling no, point. It's, it's, it seems like it's just annoying people. It's really I, not, especially especially when right now at, at most of your theaters you can already reserve your seats. There might be people who are willing to spend that extra two dollars for those seats. I, I'm not one of them. Yeah. No. Uh, y- you know, you want me to spend two more, uh, two extra dollars on my seat? Give me a headset so I don't have to hear everybody else's life going on while I'm sitting there. <laughs> uh, or at least put a headphone jack in the chair so I can bring my own headphones and listen to it. Yeah. Um, Give me a free Coke and a popcorn, because I know you're not spending any money on that. Well, you know, it's, like <laughs> I, it's funny because of all of us, I think I, I want to preserve the the communal theater experience. Like, I, I, I'm all for movie theaters. However, I think they have just a lot of challenges. We had we had COVID. We had the fact that the See, th- that things you can come only, out on video almost You can almost only use COVID as an excuse for so long, Joe. Well, no, but what I was going to say. Things like Spider-Man, No Way Home prove that nobody who wants to see these movies cares about what sickness they're getting from anybody else. Well, the bigger <laughs> thing I was going to say, though, is the biggest challenge I think they faced is that we there's just too much content, and you can do any anything with a camera. You can do any special effects, and movies aren't as special as they were 40 years ago or something like that. And I hate to say it, but it's just I think that's just the reality. Nobody's impressed by by well, the newest thing it's just if it's a good story that's one thing but there isn't this stampede you know we're never going to see anything like we did in the 70s when star wars is in the no, theaters for was, a year was, was he just ignoring like. that whole avatar thing that did billions the of billions? dollars around the world it's yeah. okay you no, know, just just I'm let him run down that line He's generally good. speaking though i don't think movies are just as special anymore i'm sorry I, I'm not going to disagree with no, you because no, no. as far as the movie theater experience, as far as I'm concerned, from the last 30 years, you know, I pretty much regard it like a spider, you know, kill it with Al- fire. Alan hasn't gone to see the, the- uh, movie in the theater since Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I, it, it's funny because I brought fishing gear. Yeah. yeah I, I want theaters to endure, and if they went away, I'd be sad. But I'm just, I'm just, these are the brutal realities that we're I, up against. I so. think what needs to happen is that somebody with a greater creativity uh, than I need to come up with a way to make the theater experience unique again. Yeah. It's just not. The, uh, the I'm sorry, the, the movie-going experience right now is as cookie-cutter as a the latest Marvel movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> oh. Not going to argue Tell with me, you, though. You not going to argue yeah, with I'm you. Not saying I, I mean, we're love, never going to get sponsored by Disney I'm anyway, not saying so I don't love these yeah. movies. Yeah. But you can tell when the – all right. This is when the person you thought was your ally is going to turn on you. Yes. This is where we're going to finally meet the big bad guy who's behind the scenes. Right. This is when, you know, the character is going to take off the mask because the actor has to be visible on screen. It's, you, you know when these parts are coming. 
Okay. It doesn't make them any less fun. It's just they're not original. A little predictable. Um, can we? Okay, I feel like we're being very negative today. Can we? Well, still, let's keep an eye on this story. Well, no, no, but, no, uh, no. Here's the thing, Joe. All right. Is there are ways to increase your revenue at the theater without basically cutting out half of the people who go there, and um, that's by, inc- you know, it's like you can have your, uh, you know, your your custom, your your wonderful movie going experience, without you know killing the guy who just wants to take his kids to see the latest Disney feature. Okay. I don't know. Let's keep an eye on this story, but uh, I, I, I want to talk about something interesting, if you don't mind. Uh, Max, cue up our science. Hail science! This is more, I think this is positive. I don't know, a real-life tractor beam, Al? That sounds pretty uh, well, really? to me. Uh, we've, I, well, because, let's just be honest, the next thing you're going to ask is what's Putin's going to do with it. Well, okay. you know, no, and, I'm and, thinking and, of how it's going to help my uh, my construction work. So. Well, he, <laughs> he's looking to get that hammer across the dock. Okay. Like, Joe, so, all you right, can't so, afford it. Yeah, it's it's more expensive than a movie ticket. So this is mm. this is uh, happening now, Alan. All right. Well, first off, microscopic and atomic level tractor beams have been around for a while. Uh, We've been using tractor beams in medicine to manipulate molecules. This is not brand new. What is brand new is macroscopic. Hold on. I'm sorry, Alan. You know I interrupt, and this is a fascinating. That's it. Stuff. When, what are, what are we envisioning with a tractor beam? Because I know in Star Star Trek and Star Wars, it's an invisible beam. It's well, an you're invisible beam of energy. It's an energy beam, and it's able to grab something and pull it or push it. Correct. And we have that now. I didn't know. We that. we have had them, but now we have a macroscopic, aka a tractor beam capable of manipulating something visible to the human eye. Okay, but I, I, this is uh, huge. This is a huge jump. We're not yeah. moving a molecule. We're actually moving substance. We're actually able to push and pull very tiny objects. Now, this leap forward means a tractor beam on Earth 20 years from now might be able to dig that rover out of the sand and move him over two feet. Right. right. Yeah. Now we're now we're talking. Okay. So tractor beams have been a sci-fi staple forever, and the physics problems behind manipulating a macroscopic object is pretty intense because not everything is magnetic. Yeah. So you have to create a ionic force great enough and powerful enough to grip and maneuver an object that you've targeted. Yeah. And so, who's, who's behind this effort? Uh, there are several different, uh, several different uh, Chinese scientists and other research facilities around the world trying to get these to come together. And with the new approach of, they're working with graphene. We've are, we've already heard about graphene being the answer to everything if right. we can figure out the question. Yeah, uh, graphene composites, and they're using them just enough to get this technology to work, so they can get the the ions to actually grip and repulse so congratulations to step number one to actually having a sci-fi level tractor beam i have a million questions alan at least uh, i'll try to get to a few of them when we come back this is cool you're listening to geek tank radio we'll be right back you're listening to geek tank radio on 98 one the max they're not afraid to call him voldemort the geek patrol is back Yet, but uh, what? I'm not. Okay. It's just a family dinner for me. What? He yeah. who must not be named. Anyway, welcome back to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max over there behind the glass. And um, Are we it, even sure he's behind the glass at the studio? He, he's probably in his lounge chair. He's probably eating donuts and doing whatever. So, But, uh, hey. Max uh, has the real power. Before the break, this is interesting. Alan, you said they're developing a real tractor beam. That's and correct. When I, envi- when I envision that, I envision a invis- in- invisible energy beam capable of grabbing like a spaceship or grabbing something or pushing it or pushing something away. You have an asteroid mm-hmm. coming at you. You activate the tractor beam and you either capture it or you bounce it away or something. Right. And I have a million questions, so I'm just going to get to the first. My A few of them. Are uh, you said this is in development? Maybe in twenty years or so, we might all have our own tractor beams. You know, uh, you know the the fact that we've crossed that hurdle between okay. the microscopic world 
you know, with using photons for power to crossing over to actual visible. This uh, this is that holy grail moment. Okay, here's my first question. Okay, because uh, you could argue that Green Lantern, in some cases, has sort of a tractor beam. Yes. He could, he could activate the ring and lift up a car and throw it at Batman yes. if he wants. Okay. Yes. But in real life, I'm assuming that if you <laughs> no, if you no, have no, a I'm tractor beam, do you have to ha- – okay, suppose I want to lift a boulder that weighs 500 pounds. Do I have to have an equal, equally stable base that can handle a 500-pound weight, or could I just point my tractor beam and chuck that boulder at my neighbor's house or something? <laughs> okay. And, well, <laughs> you're, okay, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I'm just saying – He is really tired of that tree. Wow, well, the physics, wow. I'm just curious about what we're talking about Okay, here. well, what we're and talking... how robust the system is. All right, well, here. we're talking about resistance. Okay. So a 500-pound boulder sitting on the dirt is going to have an amazing amount of resistance. Yeah. We're talking about, like, a graphene particle or something like that right now. So we're looking at exceedingly low resistance to no resistance. Okay. However, because we're looking at this, we're looking at a laser... Being able to produce, I don't know, three times the force necessary to activate a solar sail. Uh, Okay. Well, I don't know what that is. but Well, a solar sail was in of Uh, Star Wars. No, we know what it is. I just don't want to get, I don't know what the force is. Well, it it is a sail capable of being driven forward by the atoms loose in space. Just enough. So a flashlight could produce enough push to forge you across the universe. Okay. So we're looking at that opening step where now the laser is able to produce enough photon energy to reach to an object and then create a draw and pull the item towards it or create a push and push the item away. So what we're going to be looking at physically is more the photon energy than the actual mechanical lifting energy because if you were able to get enough energy around it you would basically be making it frictionless photons are light particles they are light like particles okay, they are the so things could, used in the laser yes i don't know if you answered my question but what you're saying sounds like yeah i could i could point it at a rock and if you could somewhere. generate enough power on your end to activate a strong enough tractor beam, yes, you would be able to say, no, 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 kitty, kitty, get out from under the car. No, I told you to come here. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of a leash, you have a tractor and beam. And now you Dude. would actually be able to. Bop. We finally have a use for those Tesla house batteries. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I, I could see Joe out there with his repulsor ray and the squirrels. See, I oh, oh, we could talk about his nudist neighbors. Oh well, there you go. I've wondered about tractor beams, or or I, I should say force field technology. Ever since you guys know that, what if you live in Minnesota right. and it's going to be you're going to get two push feet of snow, snow dumped out of on the way. you, and you want to create a force field to push the snow away from the roof of your well, house so it doesn't collapse. And I was thinking about of, shoveling the driveway. Yeah. Well, in an odd sort of way, Joe, this technology because it is. You know, basically laser or light driven, right? Would be able to move fast enough to repel something away from you. That's where I'm going with it. Oh, that. yeah. Oh, yeah. This could be a personal safety device. I mean, seriously, could it, this be something to keep a mugger from getting, you know? Yeah, go ahead and wow. tr- click. I uh, dare hey, you. I, I, yeah, I need love one to see now. that. A little street justice. Or, 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 with yeah. a tractor <laughs> I'm, I'm I sorry. have an idea. I, I I, the look on Brandon's face, y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm suddenly seeing the episode of the Flintstones where the little small child grabs somebody and begins yelling, bam, bam. Oh, yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, everybody would find out what Loki felt like when the Hulk got hold of him. See, I think tractor beam technology, it sounds great. It sounds interesting. But I could see this being misused. And, oh, and I would it's abuse gonna have the to hell be regulated. out of this. Strongly, oh, oh, there wouldn't even. It would just be a countdown with Brandon. Yeah, it's like it's it the same activate. reason I could never be a Jedi. I will <laughs> abuse this power. <laughs> think of what you could do with a tractor beam. I mean, that would. Oh, I, I think that would be a huge game-changing technology. Maybe so, not for the good. I mean, I, I've, I haven't mentioned Putin yet, but still, well, think I mean, of what but, you could do with this. Well, think about a, a tightly controlled tractor beam that could reach, because we're talking light. Basically, if you could get a laser to it. So a hovering 
a, a vehicle hovering over Mars could put just enough pull on one of the explorers to knock the dust off of it and get it solar charging again and turn it loose. Could you use a planet-wide tractor beam to create a atmosphere on Mars and terraform it? Would that play a role? Well, you might use a planet-wide tractor beam to attract and hold an atmosphere to it. Yeah, we're we're really playing. Yeah, fire well, I mean, it's, I don't know, man. The the ability to use a, a basically an energy force to interact with a macroscopic object is just absolutely the the goal of telepathy, telekinesis, all of all of your psychic abilities. Wanda suddenly makes sense because now she is able to create energy forces that interact in the real world. Yeah, doesn't Invisible uh, Woman, uh, Sue Storm does this stuff. She would be bending light around her, which is actually an existing technology now. Huh. Well, you better believe we're going to follow this story. With <laughs> Very <laughs> closely. Smoke, <laughs> These man. guys can't wait to get their hands on one. I signed up for vaccines really quick. I'm going to sign up for this even quicker. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what a show. You guys, that is weird. It's it's thought-provoking and scary and a little interesting. So. It's going to be great. Thanks, Alan. Uh, well done. But, you guys, um, it's time to get out of here. It's time to go enjoy the rest of the weekend. So uh, we're calling it a day. So until next week, we are the Geek Patrol, and I am Joe Thorderson. I'm Alan Gilbreth. I'm Maximilian. And I'm too happy about this tractor beam to care. See y'all next week.